the Hale Telescope at the Palomar Observatory in California. Five meters across by 17 long, the Hale is among the world's largest astronomical telescopes. The human urge to reach the very edge of space created this enormous instrument. Telescopes discover worlds so far beyond our own that galaxies of stars light years across look tiny. As we push our knowledge to the boundary of the universe, we are also turning telescopes around, in a sense, to look at inner worlds of tiny things. This might look like a telescope. In fact, it is the largest electron microscope in the world at the University of Osaka in Japan. Where telescopes look outwards in their quest for other worlds, microscopes seek hidden worlds within. Worlds within worlds within worlds. First microscopes, then electron microscopes, now scanning tunneling microscopes have improved our insight into nature's microscopic worlds. We have reached the point where we can see single atoms, the basic building blocks of the material universe. This is our eye through the darkness. With each advance, we probe more deeply into nature's secrets and her soul. The strangest thing happened to me at the studio today. We just finished taping the morning session. I sat down for lunch. And this voice started talking to me. It seemed to be coming right out of the box. Welcome to Nanospace. Let me be your guide through these worlds within worlds. Nanospace is everywhere. Everything is built upon it. A human being or a pickled plum. All nanospace. To scan the surface of a plum is to explore an alien space as strange as any jungle. Take this rock in the undergrowth. A crystal of common salt. And here, take a close look at the wood in a chopstick. The living tree drew water to its leaves through these small tubes. Rice with sesame seeds. Up close, familiar seeds look different. Their surface is as broken as a space-lost asteroid. How to describe nanospace? It's a series of ultra-microscopic worlds where common things take different forms. I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. Your guide through the uncharted waters of nanospace. Like Argonauts of old, we're going to travel into unknown worlds. This elevator is the strange space-shrinking craft that will take us there. We'll call it Nanogate, for that's what it is. A gate into the ultra-tiny worlds we see beyond the microscope. The floor I'm standing on represents what we consider normal size, the world where we live. Each lower level shrinks us by one-tenth. Of course, each floor is a world in itself, scaled to its own special scheme of things. Those near the top are rich in life. Further down lie worlds of molecules. Below that, we find realms where single atoms travel at the speed of light. 
Nanospace will offer you experiences you never dreamed of. Let's stop here on our fall into nanospace. I should explain. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter, and that's where we are in a world one billion times smaller than our own. This is the realm of the elusive atom, making it the most challenging part of our tour. Perhaps on a first visit, we should look at something more familiar. Back in a world where I'm 1.7 millimeters tall, a little thicker than a thumbnail. Good grief, this world is full of surprises. And hazardous. I'm not much bigger than a water flea, a prey for every passing fish. Especially this minnow-sized monster. At this level, we're still in a visible world. But now, let's go down, shrinking to a size where the world is measured in tenths of a millimeter. At this point, we become no taller than the thickness of a razor blade. One nano step above, we were about the same size as this flea. Now it dwarfs us. This is an elephant water flea. Not called that for its size, I hasten to add. It's named for the shape of its proboscis. Our visit is well timed. The mother flea is going to give birth to a clutch of babies about my size. scaled-down worlds in nanospace are no less rich and complex than our own. These rotating spheres are planktonic plants called volvox. Each sphere, the size of the ball in a ballpoint pen, is a colony of as many as 500 cells. Each green patch is a single cell, given its color by chlorophyll. Every cell on its surface beats little hair-like flagellae, giving the colony its spin. Like galley slaves pulling to the beat of a drum, the work of Volvox's 500 cells is coordinated by some unknown force. The one in red is me. The others are rotifers. Animals which sweep the water with a ring of bristle-like cilia around their gullet. Their cilia work like turbine blades, driving water rich in food particles into the body cavity. This streamlined predator, Paramecium, devours bacteria. A hunter-killer of the microscopic world, it's a fast, aggressive animal. Propelled by rows of cilia all over its body. Here too, cilia.